We do have Siobhan Marie O'Connor coming up later, who's still only 19. As you mentioned earlier, she went to the World Championships in 2011. That was her breakthrough year. And we also have Francesca Halso coming on later. But it'd be nice that some of these younger girls can start posting sometimes, get some experience at the European Juniors, and then start to press onto the, the senior team. And the Newlands of Cockermouth is dominating this second 15 and is going to hold on. It's uh, getting tighter. The elephant's just arrived on her shoulders. You can see she's just uh, trying to get to the wall as quickly as she can. She's got there in 101.73. Entry time is 102.73. So that's exactly a second PB for her. Second place, Tane Bruce and Catherine Stark in third. So 101.73, that's a massive chunk. She's taking over her best time. Yeah, cracking swim. Absolutely cracking swim. And deservedly get that PB, the way she attacked the race. And yep, she did start to tie up in the last 10 meters, but butterfly is such a hard stroke. And you mentioned that the, the elephant climbed onto her back, but she handled it very well. Um, I'd like to see you do 100 meters she, she gave it. A, she gave it a bun and she was fine. Yeah. Well, maybe in the break you can do 100 fly and we'll see when that elephant lands on your back. <laughs> it's probably going to be uh, probably more like, <laughs> yeah, probably, probably a mammoth or in the, <laughs> another thing that was mine. I don't think I'd even make it to 50. I think I think I would probably be the, uh, the, the eel of Glasgow, if you know what I mean. <laughs> right, on to heat number two of the 100 butterfly. Going in this one, Leah Evans of City of Manchester Aquatics in four, Laura Dawson, the University of Stirling in five, and uh, Le Smith of City of Newport in six, who's going to be getting to the wall first. It's Chloe Barrow gets her just ahead of Constance Dean and Kirsty Simpson. So at the moment it's three, seven, and eight. That will probably change over the next 50. Yeah, it certainly will. You'll already see that people are working underwater more than others, and that's where you can really gain a lot of time. If you're underwater, you're obviously not swimming, so you can save a little bit more energy. If you've got that skill in your locker, you can really produce it to great effect. We've seen the likes of Michael Phelps and Ryan Lockerty do it at the Olympic level. And it needs to be implemented at an early age, and you can see that. Chloe Larrow is going to get to the wall before everybody else. 102.10 for her, and that is uh, three tenths of a second quicker than her entry time. Laura Dawson in second place, third is Leah Evans and Harriet West in 102.75 in fourth. So the winning time there, not the fastest time so far, 102.10 for Chloe Barrow. I'm really interested to see this 100 metres fly the break then, Bob. Bob the Beast. It's not going to happen, Ross. Don't get excited, mate. Don't get excited now. It is not going to happen. This is going to happen, fortunately, though. Nope. I've been giving advice from my producer because I'm live on the... Uh, television live on the stream i cannot possibly say what i'd like to say in response so let's get on to <laughs> heat number three of the women's hundred fly which contains javon marie o'connor in four rachel lefley in three and sophie allen back in there in lane number two she's got a style hasn't she javon marie o'connor she's got a style she's got a tactic of just every single time she gets in the water she just gives it a hundred percent and she just goes out for it which is which is great to see that this this young girl is, is not fearful of anything and she just attacks the race and we saw that in, in a, a debut in 2011 she was actually in the semi-final around about second place at the 100 meters and the 200 medley and then she did start to tie her off but she wasn't afraid of any of the, the big girls in there and she just attacked it and then she's following that through now for the, for the last couple of years and it's great to see very tough event in the commonwealth because uh, second third fourth and fifth and sixth Five of the top six times are in the Commonwealth this year, so that means anybody from England, Scotland and Wales really has to go for it big time. Siobhan Marie O'Connor, though she has another semi-final and a final to come, so she doesn't have to go for broke on this one, but it's still going to be a decent time. 59.70 is Siobhan Marie O'Connor's winning time. Compared to Sarah Shearstrom, as fastest in the world, 56.53. Not great, but that's uh, a long way off. In terms of improvements, that will come later on today and in the final as well. Sophie Allen in second, 10089. Georgia Barton in second. Yeah, yeah good swim from Georgia Barton, just outside her personal best. But that'll give us some confidence going into the semi final. She qualifies later on, no doubt she, she will do with, with two heats to go with a 5988. And a butterfly heat number four coming up. Rachel Kelly going for Loughborough University in four, Alice Thomas of Swansea in five, and Charlotte Atkinson in three. We don't have a lane two, Charlotte McKenzie 
has decided this is not for her today. So Charlotte McKenzie of the first club is not swimming in lane two. So we have a spare lane, but we have some other swimmers going for a qualifying time in the 100 fly. So as we're coming into the final five metres of the first length, see who touches the wall first. And it's going to be Rachel Kelly, 27.69. She really has improved massively over the last year, Rachel Kelly. She's now being coached by James Gibson, the former 50 meter breaststroke world champion and world medalist over the 100 meters breaststroke, an Olympic finalist. So he, he knows a thing or two about sprinting and certainly 100 meters, and she has improved so much over the last 12 months. Looks like she's going to win this one as well in lane number four. Nothing much that Alice Thomas or Sean Atkinson could do about pipping her on this one. 59.09 is the time for Rachel Kelly. That's OK. She'll be happy enough with that. Not uh, her personal best, but within range at least. And uh, second place to Charlotte Atkinson. Three going under the minute there. 59.76 for Atkinson and 59.87 for Alice Thomas. This was another one of those events that, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, if we had girls going under the 60-second 60 60 mark, then we, we were jumping for joy. And you've seen three go 59 and, you know, a couple in the, the heat before. So this event is getting stronger and stronger. Well, I'll say it's going to be very hard to win medals in the Commonwealth Games later on in the year in Glasgow because of Canadian two, Australia three, four and five. And one of those being Ellen Gandy, former GB swimmer, swam for Britain at the 2012 Olympic Games in London. So can Gemma Lowe put down a marker herself? The best that Britain has to offer goes in lane four. Well, certainly as they tell Francesca Housel it's going to be hard to get a medal in this event. She's out in lane number six and she's turning first in 26.74. She wants to qualify or certainly put times down to be nominated for five events going into the Commonwealth Games later on this year. And she's already flying in the first opening 75 metres, destroying the field. She normally goes out hard as well and tries to hang on. But working with James Gibson, she's been working a lot on the back end of her races. And look at this, it's showing. And it doesn't look like Gemma Lowe is going to be able to catch it in the final five metres. Well, her entry time, Fran, is 10093. Forget that. 58.65 is the time. That puts her in and around the top ten in the world this year. 58.65 with Gemma Lowe picking up at the end. She was a little bit of drift at one stage, but over a second of drift at the turn. But came into second place in 10011. So fast start of the morning, Fran Household by quite some way, too. 58.65. That puts her up there with uh, some of the best in the world. Charlotte Atkinson has done a 58.68, but that's uh, pretty close. And she looked good as well. She did look good. Gemma Lowe has already qualified for Wales for the Commonwealth Games, so. She's not really going to be on, on firing on, on all cylinders here. Uh, just talking to her, she did have a little bit of a, an injury a couple of weeks ago, so she's just recovering from that. So that's a solid time for her in the circumstances. Great swim there by Francesca Halsall, coached there by James Gibson, who will luckily will get a, a chat to speak to him later on in the week in the studio. So Kerry Ann, tough race, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, Fran did such a great swim then. She was so far out in front, you know, 58.65 is a really great split for her this morning. Mm -hmm. um, but you had some of the younger ones as well, like Siobhan Maria O'Connor, you know, she went at 59. Yeah. So Who you're speaking very highly of this week, aren't you? Because you say she's she's performing very well. Yeah, and she'll have had that swim as well for the, um, the swim earlier that she did. So she's a little bit more warmed up now in the tuna freestyle. So I think tonight's going to be really interesting for her to see which one that she puts the emphasis on. Mm -hmm. And Francesca Halsell, we know, has been concentrating at the back end of last year on the 50s so how is this in comparison in terms of her training is this going to be tougher for her no well she told me that she's been training more for the hundreds this season so she's really put the emphasis back on doing okay. that for the hundreds fab okay well let's move on now to the men's 100 meter backstroke six heats of this first one only has three competitors in it representing harrogate plymouth leander and team ipswich As a Plymouth swimmer, Reese Worth. And uh, it is always worth having a look at what Plymouth are doing these days because with Ruta Melitite and Ben Proud, it's obviously something in the water down in Plymouth with their new or newish 50 metre pool. That's made a big difference to them, hasn't it? Yeah, it certainly has. And, you know, having a, 
an Olympic champion in your miss is certainly going to also help. And you know, just walking in, into training, knowing that you are training against somebody that's been to the Olympic Games and, and was it was really a, an unknown and coming out with a gold medal must give you so much confidence in your coach and in your strength and conditioning coach and your program and your training. So there must be a real buzz around that and you're seeing more and more people from Plymouth along with with the 50 metre pool that are coming through and swimming really well. Well, let's not forget about Team Esther, which has produced the likes of Karen Pickering over the years, and uh, they're looking for their next generation to come through. Maybe Jake Tyson is one of those. Stops the clock at 58.44. That's a new PB for him, certainly considering his entry time is 59.11. Second is Matthew Rudolph, and third place is Reese Worth. So well done to Jake. 58.44 is the best that he has ever done. Yeah, it's a great time. Great time to, to come in this morning. 0.6 PB. Might be the only chance, chance these guys have got to swim. Probably won't be progressing into, certainly won't be in the, in the senior final. Or and probably won't be in, in the junior final either. So it's, uh, you know, this is the, the biggest swim that they're probably going to do in, in, could be in their careers. And you know, to do a PB at this, in this stage is, uh, you know, it's going to be absolutely excellent. Good point to make is about uh, the 100 backstroke with uh, the junior finals happening at the beginning of the evening session at 6 o'clock. Before we actually get into the senior finals, there will be junior finals as well. So there is, uh, in some cases, a second chance for the, uh, the youngsters to have another swim later on in the day. This is heat number two. Christopher McCollum of East Lothian in two. Fraser Spooner of West Lothian in three. Oliver Smith, Cockermouth in four, Perry Garner, Middlesbrough in five, Daniel Cross of Borough of Kirklees in six, and Suleiman Butt of Aberdeen, who swam earlier on, is back in lane number seven. First 50 completed, and at the turn, it's just Oliver Smith, 28.43. He's turning first, and this is where, you know, certainly when you get into the later of, of the heats, you'll see how important the underwater phase is. You can go 30 metres underwater, 15 metres off the start, 15 metres off the turn. And if that is in your locker, you've got to use it because you're so much quicker going under the water than you are on top of the water. Yellow cap matching the lane that he is in. Looks like it's going to be all the way to the wall, just uh, just about edging out. Barry Garner is Oliver Smith in 58.32, winning that race by 0.16 of a second. Fraser Spooner finishing third in 58.86. So 58.32 for, for Smith. Uh, Bettis' entry time of 58.71. Great to see some more guys going under their entry times and their, and their PBs. Exactly what you want to, to come to this stage and, and post personal best times. Again, so much from this experience co competing in this environment. Well, Braveheart's here. He's arrived in lane two. Well, Robbie Rennick who you would normally not associate with backstroke, I have to say. <laughs> I can't ever remember him doing backstroke. Have you seen him do backstroke uh, before? Uh, well, only, only in training, so it'll be interesting to see how, how Robbie does. Um, but knowing Robbie as I do, he's, he's a competitor. And interesting, you don't necessarily see him in lane two either. Normally in the centre lanes and almost in the, always in the, in the final heats, whether it's domestic or international. So he's, you know, he's in heat number three and lane number two. He opted not to do the 400 freestyle today. He's doing the 100 backstroke instead. And not the grace of start. So be, if you're a backstroke specialist, you learn how to do a start, and that is not a backstroke start, <laughs> no, is it? But, no, but he's, he's come up, he's, uh, he's out there in front. And yeah, technically, you know, if you're a backstroker, you probably wouldn't want to have that technique. Uh, there's probably better techniques in the water, but he is a fighter. He is a competitor and it, you know, he's going to give it his all this morning to hopefully get into another swim later on. Likes of Joe Hume and Joe Litchfield and Jack Ness will, uh, as it is their main event, or one of the main events, be looking to post a fast time here. We'll see. Robbie's entry time, by the way, is uh, 58.44. So he has done it in terms of an entry time, but they expect him to be in the mix at the end, although he might have other thoughts. But look at the far side of the pool, because that's where all the main protagonists are. Jack Ness, William Harrison and Barton Townley on the far side, and also in four coming through strongly at the end is Joseph Hume. Hume's going to get the touch in lane four in 57.48. Then Harrison in two in lane seven. Third, Jack Ness and Barton Townley and Robbie Rennick. 
didn't even oh, it's, it's right on the minute marker one zero 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 in eighth place <laughs> it's, it's great for these, these guys you know you've got the 16 17 year olds that are uh, competing against the commonwealth champion and, and they beat them okay it's not in the event that, that he won the commonwealth but no they can always say they beat a commonwealth champion yeah and i can also tell you that's a massive pb for, for joe hume in lane four 58.36 before today, 57.48 today. So that's, uh, what, three quarters of a second thereabouts. But, uh, almost eight tenths, so well done to him. It's a very big chunk he's taken out of that. On to heat number four. And uh, some established swimmers, some names you'll recognize. Sam Strawn, who used to be at Plymouth, goes in three. Marco Lochran in four. Sam Horrocks in lane number five and Callum Jarvis in six. It should be uh, providing the uh, going for broke this one, which they don't need to do, of course, with semi finals to come. But lanes three, four, and five, and six should be the ones in the mix here. Yes, this is the first of the, the faster heats. Three more or two more heats to come after this. And Marco Lochran in lane number four. You'd expect to be up there winning this heat. And it does turn his second, actually, behind Samuel Straughton from Loughborough University. So Strawn leads from Marco Lockeran at the end of 50. Now, how are things going to shape up? Well, there's four of them, nearly five of them in the line. As I mentioned, three, four, five, and six. And three, four, five, and six are going to come in virtually together. Now, can Marco Lochran hang on in lane four? He's taken the lead now by about, ooh, about half a body length, less than that at the end. 55.73, fastest of the morning so far for Marco Lochran. Second place to Callum Jarvis, 55.86. And third to John Lasinski in 56.21. Good finish from him because he wasn't really in the mix until very near the end. Marco Lochran, fastest so far at 55.73. Yeah, so not particularly rapid from Marco. Um, you know, one and a half seconds off his, his entry time, but he's jumped straight out the pool. Looked like it probably was going to be reasonably easy for him, but if he makes the semi-final later on, he should do with that time. But then we see Liam Tancock in lane number four. Now, that's an interesting one. Had a very, very bad year last year with injury. Uh, looks to me like um, he's not shaved. <laughs> <laughs> he most well, that's that's not even difficult from a distance to notice that. I was thinking, hello, that will come off tonight, I'm sure, or come off tomorrow for the final. He obviously thinks he's uh, got enough in his locker, and he should have to get a good time here. So Liam Tancock up against Ryan Bennett and Joseph Patching. In I've never seen quite that much of a beard on Liam Tancock. I'm rather taken back by that. Um, it starts a good, actually not quite as good as they normally are, but I think he's just going through the motions here. Yeah, he's ever so close to the 15 metre mark. Um, you know, it looks to me like he's probably just right on that 15 metre mark. But yeah, he hasn't shaved his face, he's shaved everything else. Like you mentioned, he did have a disappointing year with injury last year. But to his credit, he didn't come out and he didn't use it as an excuse. He just came out and said he wasn't, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't good enough on the day. And that's a credit to, to Liam because you know, a lot of other swimmers would have come out and, and told the world about their injury. Yeah, he took it on the chin and just said he wasn't good enough on the day. And he's gone back to training and worked hard. And it's interesting to see how he'll compete over the rest of the week. Yeah, we hope to see Liam back at his very best this year. Maybe not going to win this heat. It's going to be very tight between him and Joseph Patching. And Liam gets there marginally by 0.14. Liam Tancock, 55-3-4. Patching, 55-4-8. And third place to Charlie Balderston, 55.73. So Liam Tancock, you probably won't see him like this too often. With uh, quite a growth of beard. I wonder how uh, his other half, Caitlin, feels about that. A bit itchy, I would think. 55-3-4. Yeah, he looked he looked comfortable. He looked smooth. It, you know, it wasn't one of his uh, his best starts. Uh, he really is world class underwater. He's, he's incredibly quick. World champion over the 50 meters backstroke. Last heat of the men's 100 backstroke. Chris Walker Heaven, who had a bit of a breakthrough at the back end of 2013 with a short course European medal. Been really impressed with with the way Chris Walker has, been, has, has handled himself, certainly after the, the Olympic Games. Yeah, he came through last year, 
won. He beat Liam Tancock on the 100 metres backstroke and then went through, like you just mentioned, into the back end of, of last year. Really is starting to put some quality times. I think he now starts to believe that once he can get through to, to the international events, he can actually deliver at the international meets and something he hasn't done in the past but I think he seems to now be learning how to handle that pressure. Well, I've seen him do it long course though. He's uh, made qualification times, made Olympic games, made world championships and not pushed on at long course. So maybe this is the time for him to really step up to the plate. And he's having a decent start here. In fact, he's dominating the early stages of the last heat of the 100 backstroke. will be leading at 50 and 26.66. Leading by about half a second from Joe Elwood in second and Jonathan Carlisle third. Yeah, expect Craig McNally in lane number five to come back incredibly quick. He is more of a 200 metres backstroker and his last 100 metres on that 200 back is absolutely rapid. Saw him at the World Championships last year making the final. But there's no doubt who's certainly commanding this heat and it is going to be Chris Walker Heaven from the University of Bath starting to ease down into the finish. Very, very easy in 55.35, so 1 100 slower than Liam Tancock, but looked incredibly smooth. Yeah, looking forward to the head to head between those two. Uh, won't happen in the semi finals, they should be in different semis tonight, but when the final comes around tomorrow, seeing those two back in harness. Chris Walker Heaven 55.35, Joe Elwood 55.98, as you mentioned, Liam Knight with a pretty impressive finish. Not quite as quick as he's ever been, but 56.01. And uh, top 16 go through to the semi finals. The final of the 100 backstroke is tomorrow. So I'm certainly looking forward to the head to head between Chris Walker Heaven and Liam Tancock, who's been out with a shoulder injury, Kerry. Yeah, he told me that he only got back in the water on the 4th of January. So everybody else will have been back in since September. So, you know, he's had a, a lot of work to do in the last few weeks, but it's paid off because it's done really well then. He did, he did. And like we say, it'll be great to, to see how this develops for him. Now, it's difficult because this is his opportunity to qualify, isn't it, Kerry? Yeah, so for him and for, for Chris Walker Hebben, they both have to do as close under that time, or sorry, they have to get as far under that time as they possibly can because this is the only chance they're going to get to, to qualify. Yeah, and as you can see on the, on the screen there, great swim from Liam. He did promise me that he was going to shave that beard off. I know Ross and Bob <laughs> mentioned uh, maybe later on for the, uh, the semi finals or, or for the finals perhaps. Um, but in terms of pressure for him, he's an experienced swimmer, isn't he? So he can kind of handle this. Yeah, well, he had a year out, you know, he didn't have the year last year that he wanted, so he wasn't on the major teams last year so he's going to want to come back he's going to want to prove to everybody that he's got still got what it takes in which he clearly has he's, he's kind of shown that to his day any other surprises in that race for you carry on um not really i think uh for the some of the other nations that haven't had their chance to qualify yet as well there was a few good swims from from those guys um but yeah it'll be really interesting tonight to see how that final pans out mm -hmm. and don't forget obviously you can keep coming to us for all the live actions to stay tuned all the time now we move on to the men's 200 meter breaststroke Yum yum, I say. What an event this is, as far as uh, Britain is concerned. Englishman Scotsman, as far as the eye can see in the 200 breaststroke. It's an event where Britain is very strong at the moment. That's the starting lineup for heat number one. Benjamin Purcell of Hatfield in one, Joshua Winnicott of Birmingham in two, Kieran Alsop of Portsmouth three, four is Samuel Richards of City of Coventry, Woking's Dominic Holloway, and I know the uh, Woking lot are watching on the stream, so hello to you in five, Ian Rose of Warrender in six, Aidan McDonough of Borough Stockton in seven, and Cameron Park of East Kilbride in lane eight. Remember, straight to final on the 200 breaststroke, so you have to crack on in the morning, there's no holding back. Yeah, certainly no holding back, and there is no holding back from the swimmer in lane number two, Winnie Cock from City of Birmingham, turning 30.65 over a second ahead of lane number three in the second place. But yeah, you're absolutely right. We we have a history in this event that goes back as as far as or as old as you are, Bob. So going back to Stop the Stop it, you. Going back to the early well, since really the Olympics was was around in 1884. Six, seven, eight. Well, yeah, anyway, back into the 18, 1896. Yes, thank you. 1896. So, um, just after you were born. Um, but you know, we we do have a history in this event, and it's great that we actually see now a whole load of youngsters coming up. We're going to see the, the likes of J uh, Adam Peaty coming on. That's normally a hundred metres breaststroker, but has put in some very fast two hundred metres. 
So glad you're not here this weekend. At the uh, 100 turn, Joshua Winnicott, fastest 105.82. Second, Kieran Alsop of Portsmouth and third, Warrenders in row. So 105.82 at the turn of the 100 for Joshua Winnicott, who is dominating this race and looks like, unless he uh, blows up badly in the last 50, he's going to win this. Yeah, we spoke a lot about it this morning, about doing your own race and somebody else that's on the, on the outside of the pool, not necessarily one of the fastest on paper, but doing his own race, City of Birmingham, is led from the first 50 and certainly with 150 to go, or the last 25 metres, he's still out there in, in front, doesn't seem to be rushing his stroke too much, and the rest of the field can't really make inroads onto his lead. 2.25.66 is the time he set as his entry time. Well, he's going to be massively inside that, and provided he keeps going and doesn't uh, tire up too much. This is going to be about a five-second PB, or four-second at least. 2.21.29 for Joshua Winnicott, with Kieran Alsop 2.23.19 in second place. Third is Dominic Holloway of Woking. I can hear the cheers from here. 2.24.16 for Dominic, and that is a PB for him as well. So all the early heats are pretty much all the early heats this morning are producing personal best and sizable ones at that yeah cracking PB you know when you're in swimming you look always just to go faster than the time you've gone before and even if that's 0.1 or 1 100 you'd be delighted but to go what four seconds quicker that's absolutely huge you know talking four seconds in, in a breaststroke event about six meters very positively swum a positive result great outcome for him he too of the men's 200 breaststroke. You saw the lineup. I'll give you the team. City of Birmingham represented by Luke Davis, Mikkel Umnoff of Plymouth, Cockermouse Ed Baxter, Matthew Nicholson of Glasgow in four, Chris Kerr of Warrender in five, another Warrender swimmer in six, Daniel Lim, Christopher Green of Guildford in seven, and Joel O'Halloran of Dermanside in lane eight. The mark is set down. It's a pretty good one, too. 2.21.29 for these early heats. Remember, these are all in the kind of 2.21, 2.22 ballpark. So they have to replicate their uh, entry times if they, if they want to progress or at least get a chance in some of the cases of making the junior final later on but uh, this one's a bit more closely fought it's about one two three four five six in a line in fact not really anybody dropped to this stage no it does look like it is the swimmer in lane number four this is from the city of Glasgow, 31-4-3. And it just seems to be around about half a body length ahead of the rest of the field. But the rest of the field are all pretty much in a line. Well, he's the only swimmer in this field who has gone sub 2.20, so we expect him probably to dominate. 106.95, that's a good split time for him. Mikhail Umnoff of Plymouth in second, and Chris Kerr of Warrender in third place. So at the moment, Nicholson providing he can keep going and hasn't got a, a huge margin over the rest, but uh, so it's probably about half a second on paper quicker than everybody else in this field. This is where you see, see swimmers making a move on that third 50. They've done 100 metres, and now it's just two lengths to go before they hit the wall to finish. And the third 50 is really the one that they work hard in training at it does look like it is Umlof that really is certainly making his move and he's only just half a second now behind Nicholson of City of Glasgow his best time to 19.80 so we'll be uh, hoping to, to eat into that a bit more he's got a, a classical breaststroke kind of uh, Michael Jameson-esque with uh, seems a, a modicum of effort but uh, gets him through the neck's not doing an awful lot, the arm's doing it, and the shoulder's all doing the work. And uh, if anything, he's come stronger over the last 50. Umlof was right on his shoulder before, but Nicholson's going to take this. How can he get, well, it's not going to be under 220, he's going to be outside that. 221.43, so not the fastest of the morning so far. Second place going to Luke Davis, who snuck up into second in lane number one. And third to Chris Kerr, that time winning again, 221.43 which is uh, just slightly outside the time in the previous heat, 2.21.29, but Nicholson the winner, Davis, Kerr and Umnoff. So it is still the, the time from heat number one that's the fastest so far this morning of the men's 200 metres breaststroke, 2.21 from the first heat. It should all change in this one though. Rob Holden is going in lane four in the third heat of the 200 breaststroke him representing Millfield University of Stirling just up the road Ross Muir also Fabian 
with Brad of City of Oxford, Loughborough with James Brody, Christopher Steeples of City of Manchester, Rory Pardo of Swansea, Ryan Flanagan of City of uh, Sheffield, in case they're shouting in Bath. I haven't forgotten Neil Redmond, though. He's in lane number one, but uh, blazing the trail. Well, two of them, really. Rob Holdness and Chris Steeples uh, going all out early on. And uh, in between them, James Brody's in the mix as well. He's in second place at the turn. Yeah, James Brody had a, a breakthrough year in around about 2011, 2012, and there's talk that maybe he could, he could, you know, certainly challenge for for the Olympic team, um, and certainly the year after in 2013. But you know, he's, he's up against the likes of Michael Jameson and Andrew Willis. So you know, those uh, big shoes to to try and get past. But he is a quality swimmer from the Luff from Loughborough University. Rob Holdenus, fifth at the Commonwealth Games back in 2010. So also another quality swimmer that's trained a lot in America, but now has come home and he's training in Millfield. So you know, there's, there's some experience in, in this field and expect those times to be tumbling. Really hard though, if you are a tournament breaststroker in Great Britain, because you know there are two, three, four, five world-class breaststrokers and you've got to get down below 210 to be world-class and uh, none of these have managed that as yet. But Rob Holdenus will hope this is maybe his breakthrough meet. He can do a really fast time. James Brody is going every single stroke of the way with him though. And lanes four and five are dominating this race. Holdenus though has uh, taken a bit of a lead now, probably about a body length lead at the turn with 50 to go. One 39.59. Yes, and it's not going to go under 2.10 this morning, but it's going to post a, a very strong time. It's going to be the fastest time of the morning so far, and he does look incredibly strong over this back 100 metres. Now, can he bring it all the way in to the end? This is where it gets really tough for the breaststrokers. The old lactate starts building up at this stage. You're not doing a lot with the legs, you're doing mostly with the arms, the shoulders, and uh, making sure you're getting forward as quickly as you possibly can. Bit of rotation, 2.14.44, actually not massively impressive, but probably, you know, I say just about enough. You, you look at this, the um, talent that's to come, 2.14 may not quite make it for the uh, final for Rob Holdenus, even though he looked impressive enough, with uh, another two heats to come, the likes of Andrew Willis to come, Michael Jameson to come. Might be tough, 2.14.44 is the fastest. Ross Mule 2.15.89 and James Brody 2.16.09. Just to mention, by the way, uh, as far as the fastest times in the world, Michael Jameson, who we'll see shortly, 2.08.01. Christian Sprenger, Australia, 2.08.63. And Marco Koch, 2.08.84 with Ross Murdoch in fourth. Now, the uh, top Englishman in the 200 breaststroke, just about to take to the water. Fourth at the World Championships last year. Just missing out on a medal. Only marginally, and actually beating his teammate Michael Jameson in the fifth. Fourth place it was in Barcelona for Andrew Willis. He goes in four. Now, Adam Peaty should have been on that World Championship team in the 100, but then sadly got his finish all wrong. Yeah, he did. He was, you know, in the, in the championships last year, he was leading, or certainly was second place all the way until the last centimeter where Michael Jameson just pissed him on to the finish he should have been there uh, but he's responded incredibly well posted some very very fast times over the 100 meters and looking now to to get in do a 200 meters breaststroke not his main event but again blown away those cobwebs seeing what kind of form is in and knows he's been training incredibly well speaking with mel marshall his coach and she's delighted the way the things have been going over the last six or seven months so it's all about putting that hard work into, into practice here and showing the rest of the world what he's been doing. Good scrap, and uh, Andrew Willis is just biding his time, looking to his right and going, who is this young pretender? Mr. Petey, I've got your measure. Well, at the moment he hasn't quite, because Petey leads at the halfway stage. 102.15 compared to 102.39 for Willis. This is where Andrew Willis comes strong and should come strong. And surely will come strong over the next 75 metres. Petey, though, is saying to him, I can match you here. I am the up-and-coming one, not you. And he certainly is the up-and-coming swimmer. No, he's, he's not letting Andrew Willis get an inch on him at all. And he has been working incredibly hard on the back end as... And um, PT. So where Andrew Willis' strength is over the last 200 metres, Adam Peter's been working that to combat those big boys that can do that to him. So he's 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 in good form and he's looking good at the minute. 
Let's hope big Chelsea fan Andrew Willis has not been celebrating too much after Tuesday night's Champions League progression to the semi-finals, and I think uh, he's the ultimate pro, so he won't be. And then also not want to be beaten by Adam Peaty, and I think he's just about got his measure. Peaty, though, is going to post a pretty decent time here. There's a three-second differential between their personal best, 2.11.07 for Adam Peaty. Well, he's going to go inside 2.11, is he? He's going to be there or thereabouts, not much outside. This is a 2.11.42, 2.11.94, half a second between Andrew Willis and Adam Peaty at the finish. Andrew Rodgy in third, 2.15. 15, so fastest time of the morning for Andrew Willis, 2.11.42, and that's a quite comfortable swim for him. Yeah, and he uh, he's just looked at Michael Jameson, gave him a nod, said, that's the time you've got to beat, mate. Training partners at the University of Bath. He looks, he looks comfortable. He look, didn't look like he was, there was too much pressure on him. Adam Peaty looked very good as well, but he looked like Andrew Willis had it all under control, and when he needed to turn it on down the last 50, he did so and opened up a half a second lead. That's his fastest time of the world, you know, in the world this year, and puts him number three in Britain, because he goes above Craig Benson with that time. Does Andrew Willis. Now, here comes our Olympic silver medalist. Michael Jameson going in lane number four for Bath University. Craig Benson, who I mentioned, uh, 2.11.62 at the Scottish Nationals last week. He goes in five and Callum Tate in three. So, Michael Jameson, what are you going to do now? As we know, uh, unless he swims it slightly differently, which he did actually at Chewell in the pool, um, Michael Jameson tends to split his race and everything comes in the second half rather than the first half. Yeah, he's an incredibly fit individual, so powerful. His reactions off the blocks weren't as good as the, the people either side of him. It was about a point one down on Craig Benson. Thought by the time they got into the first stroke, he's already you know, an arm length ahead of everybody else. So his underwater phase is so, so powerful. And he's just so fit. And the endurance work that he does with Dave McNulty and obviously Andrew Willis will really help him when he gets to that international stage when a lot of the, the bigger guys go out really quick and he can hold on to their shoulder and then burn them in the last half of the race. I used to say, if you want to watch poetry in motion, watch Paul Palmer's freestyle. And I think the same also applies to Michael Jefferson's breaststroke. You look at that and you think, is there any way you could improve Michael Jefferson's stroke? And I don't think you can. I think it is absolute perfection. You never see a kink in it. Uh, even when he gets tired, it seems to hold together. Um, it's immaculate. If, if you were doing a, a training session on how to swim breaststroke, wouldn't you follow Michael Jameson's example? He certainly would. He, you know, he's, he's got everything. Um, you know, he is, he is good at the 100 meters breaststroke as well, so he does have a little bit of speed, but he really is built for the 200. Um, he's so, so lean. He always has the, the lowest skin fold test on the team. He's, uh, you know, his metabolism is, is absolutely you know, rapid. He can eat something and the very next second he's burnt it off. You know, he is, he is a pure athlete and, uh, you know, he's 100% he's committed to the sport and he trains incredi incredibly hard. Well, I could watch this man swim all day because I think he's absolute poetry in motion and he is right here, even though he's got Craig Benson right on his shoulder and James Wilby's coming back very strongly too in lane number six. But uh, I don't think Michael Jameson would be too concerned about that. He's got that uh, nice loping elongated stroke which takes him at a time of 2.12.43. So not as quick as his uh, training partner down at Bath, but he won't worry about that too much. James Wilby though, 2.12.69. And that's a massive PB. 2.15.72 is his entry time. 2.12.69. He's made up three seconds there. That's amazing. Uh, Craig Benson, 2.12.81. Not as quick as he went last week. 2.11.62 at the Scottish Nationals. But that's a huge change. Will be PB. Massive. So look at the confirmation of the results. Michael Jameson with the... Time 2.12.43, just to confirm that for you. The winning time for the man in your picture, Michael Jameson. And uh, very comfortably along with training partner down at Bath, Andrew Willis, into tonight's final of the 200 breaststroke. There's the man who uh, will certainly be involved in a scrap tonight. You can see what Adam PT can do as well. We're waiting for uh, that result to be clarified. We don't have... Ah, uh, we have a DQ. That's right. Peter Tehish in lane number one has uh, been disqualified. Winning time though for Michael Jefferson, 2.12.43. James Wilby pushing him all the way, 2.12.69. Craig Benson in third. 
So, Kerry ann we always look at the, the semi finals and the heats, and you always think, can they go a bit faster? We know that Andrew Willis and Michael Jameson train together. Now, what, what's your thoughts? Because Ross has just said uh, on the live feed there about what an incredible athlete Michael Jameson yeah. really is. What's your thoughts? Because I know you've been chatting to him this week, haven't you? Well, I know that he really wants to swim fast here. He thinks that his World Championships race wasn't the race that he wanted to, so he's kind of got a point to prove to himself, I think, more, more than to anybody else. But I know that he's going to want to swim really fast fast tonight uh -huh. and he has got no, I'm not going to say pressure because he's a professional athlete he can handle it but everybody has got all eyes on him haven't they yeah well it's his home pool home crowd so but he'll want to perform he loves that kind of stuff he loves the pressure especially being here he wants that yeah okay now speaking of loving the pressure and speaking of, of the competition so far let's talk about what's been your highlights this morning carry on because we'll, we'll go through them as quick as we can because tonight we kick off the action at six o'clock we are going to be here on the live feed at ten to six That's at 1750 so make sure you tune in because we have all the information that you need to know for this event so carry on Let, let's go let's go through this so we're going to look at the women's 400 meters individual medley yeah. i think i know who you're going to go with here but <laughs> tell me anyway uh, amy wilmot i mean she was by far the, the quickest swimmer this morning and she's going to want to try and better her pb which is a 433 yeah okay so we'll look out for her then the men's 400 meter freestyle yeah so james guy isn't actually ranked first going into it but he looked like he went really easy this morning like I said earlier, he's got a few things that he needs to sharpen up. His turns, he needs to stop double you breathing. You need to go and have a word with him, don't <laughs> you? Go and tell him off. <laughs> so you're looking forward to seeing him. In the S9 100 meter freestyle for the men as well, Joseph Craig had a great swim. Yeah, well, I mean, he's Olympic champion for the Fauna freestyle, so he has a huge amount of experience. So tonight, I'm sure that he's just going to go in there and try and do whatever he can. Uh -huh. And a great event this morning, the women's 200 feet. We love that event, don't we? Because there is so much to lose. Well, it's the relay qualification as well. So exactly. everybody's going to want to be in that top four spot and hope that they're under the, the consideration time. And then back to it again, the 200 meter breaststroke as well for the men's. It's going to be a good evening, isn't it? It's going to be a really good evening. There's all the rivalries going on. There's the English rivalry. There's the Scottish rivalry as well. And there's uh, Rob Holden in there who's Welsh. So I think it's going to be the battle of the countries. Uh -huh. And we have some swimmers, of course, that were competing last week at the Scottish Champs as yeah. well. How much in terms of being rested, how difficult is that to go back to back? It's quite strange because a lot of people either rested for the Scottish last week yeah. or they rested for this competition now. So I think from my understanding, Michael Jameson rested for this competition. So I'm really looking forward to him swimming fast. He did a 208 last week and number one in the world for the 200 breaststroke. So he's going to want to prove and make a real big point mm -hmm. tonight in that 200 breaststroke. But not to forget about Andrew Willis. Obviously, we said that they train together, yeah. but there's got to be. They're, they're, they're obviously yeah. friends, but there's got to be that rivalry between them. There is, but it's a really nice rivalry. I think um, yeah. as soon as they're in the water, you know, they're enemies and they're, they're fighting against each other. But outside of the water, they have a huge amount of respect for each other. And it's the same for all the breaststrokers. We have Craig Benson, you know, we have Adam Peaty, who's a youngster coming up. We have Ross Murdoch, who is Scottish as well. And they're all doing world class time. So I think it's great that as a nation, we're doing so well in, in that 200 breaststroke event. And it's, it's great to see because we have got world-class performances. And just to, as an example, the men's 200 meter breaststroke there, it's yeah. world-class performances, isn't it? Yeah, well, I think if you look at the, the people, I think we could be in the top 20 for most, well, sorry, the top 10 for most of our 200 breaststroke boys that, were in, that will be in this final tonight. Uh -huh. So it's, it's very exciting to watch uh, this evening's final. So like I say, at 10 to 6 tonight, we kick off on the live feed and you can see all the action for the whole evening. So there's needless for me and Kerry Ann to say thank you for tuning in to the live feed for the British Gas Swimming Championships 2014. I will see you at 10 to 6 tonight.
Thank you. 